Stone Harbor, the seashore at its best. Shining as a pearl washed up on the beach of southern New Jersey, our borough of Stone Harbor has grown from the dream of the South Jersey Realty Company to the vibrant, warm community that we know today. Stately homes, summer cottages, a few motels and condominiums are the refuge of both summer visitors and year-round residents. A thriving summer business community, once all but dormant during the off-season, now features many shops and businesses open all year. And just as spring hurls the rebirth of flowers and trees, so it brings the beginning of another season of boating, fishing, swimming, or just plain relaxing on the beach. But where and how did it all begin? It started with the Risley Brothers and the South Jersey Realty Company. As we see Stone Harbor today, with its geometric street patterns, avenues running north and south, numbered streets running east and west, it stands almost as it was originally planned. Legend has it that Stone Harbor takes its name from a Captain Stone, commander of an English merchant sailing ship that he guided to safe harbor in our bay waters to escape a storm at sea. In 1892, the first building, an inn, was built at about 80th Street and the beach. Shortly thereafter, six or seven cottages were erected and formed the nucleus of Stone Harbor's development. By the early 1900s, streets and avenues gradually took shape as sand was moved by horse and wagon. Men working with what today we might call primitive tools and equipment laid the roadbeds, installed sewer and water lines, and Stone Harbor began to evolve. Cottages soon dotted the landscape. The first well was drilled, and people began to call Stone Harbor their home. The first well was driven to a depth of 856 feet to the Kirkwood Aquifier, from which we still get our fresh water. Our pumping station was built in 1924, where it stands at 96th Street and 2nd Avenue. The home of Reese Risley, built at 85th Street and 1st Avenue, and still standing today, rivals the sumptuous homes now prevalent throughout our borough. The first shopping mall was the Van Fine General Store, located at 85th Street and 2nd Avenue. Here you could find anything from fish hooks to button hooks, Helmar cigarettes to that new drink Coca-Cola, or just shoot a game of pool. That lady in the long white dress is Marie Louise Van Fine, owner and operator of the store. As our town took shape, churches played an important part in its development and were the centers of both religious and social activities. St. Mary's Episcopal Church and St. Paul's Roman Catholic Church are seen as they appeared in the summer of 1911. Our Savior Lutheran Church was built in 1917, followed by the Bethel AME Church in 1918. Direct access by automobile from the mainland was vital to the development of the island, and so the Stone Harbor Boulevard from Cape May Courthouse was linked to the island by our 96th Street Bridge the greatest little bridge in the world. On July 3rd, 1911, Woodrow Wilson, governor of the state of New Jersey and soon to be president of the United States, officiated at the opening of our bridge. By the end of the first decade of the new century, the vitality of this growing island community caught the attention of the federal government. With fishing and whaling vessels plying the coast, and using Hereford Inlet to find safe harbor and destinations for the daily catches, a United States life-saving station was established in 1911 at what would finally become 111th Street and the beach. In World War I and World War II, it would serve as a lookout point and coastal patrol base for the United States Coast Guard. Today, it serves as the post home for our American Legion Post 331. 
But it was on May 12, 1914, that the first election took place in Stone Harbor, and the first borough council meeting followed on May 14th. It was then that we became an incorporated governmental entity of the state of New Jersey. Howard S. Risley was elected mayor, with S. E. Herbert, J. W. Junkerth, W. L. Turpin, William Shuck, and Henry Owens as councilmen. Clarence O. Letzkus was appointed our first borough clerk, and Michael P. Lennon became our first police officer, known then as the borough marshal. Mr. Lennon had previously served as the night watchman for the Risley brothers. Just as sailing ships gave way to steam-driven ocean liners, as the horse and buggy gave way to the infernal automobile, so modern transportation came to Stone Harbor in the form of the steam train, carrying would-be land buyers and day trippers to this island paradise. Coming from Sea Isle City, the tracks entered the northern end of the island and terminated at the turnaround tracks at 111th Street. And as each excursion train brought more and more people to our shore and more and more automobiles crossed our bridge, buildings of all types and sizes became more prevalent. 96th Street took shape. The first standpipe, we call it a water tower today, and the pumping station appeared at 96th and 2nd, and electricity became as important as gaslight. A train spur was installed along Stone Harbor Boulevard to service the lumber company and the railway depot on 96th Street. For many years, it serviced a railway express office near the water department building. The fear of fire was just as great in our early days as it is today. So in 1912, the Stone Harbor Volunteer Fire Company No. 1 Incorporated was formed and the first firehouse was erected in 1913 on land donated by Mrs. Reese Brisley. It can still be seen today as a private residence on 85th Street. Compare that horse-drawn pumper and hand-activated alarm to the modern vehicles, alarm system, and techniques of today, and you will find the same dedication to community service evident in those who, throughout the years, we have proudly called our volunteer firemen. But the greatest appeal of this growing community was the fresh air, sunshine, and bathing in the Atlantic Ocean off its pristine beaches. Summer brought hundreds and eventually thousands of sun worshippers to our shore. Bathing suits, becoming more scandalous each year, were only seen at the beach and occasionally on the newly constructed boardwalk. Gone is the boardwalk demolished in the hurricane of 1944 and bathing suits can now be seen anywhere and everywhere in our town. The boardwalk, built in 1914 at a cost of $40,000, was 25 feet wide and extended for a mile and a quarter along our beachfront. A fishing pier extended into the ocean at its southern terminus at 106th Street. We can name only a few in this picture. Maybe you can name some more. That's little Janie Leskus, now known as our historian, Jane Scott. Jane's mother, Mrs. Gladys Leskus, and the wife of our first borough clerk, Dutch Leskus. And that's Jane's aunt, Mrs. Mabel Potter, better known to many of us as Aunt Mabel, or even from our spring fling days as Dolly. A dip in the ocean is always a safe respite from those hot summer days for we enjoy a long, gradually sloping sand terrain extending into the ocean. But there were and are those foolhardy folks who venture too far from the beach for safety. And so the Stone Harbor Beach Patrol became a necessity for our safety. In 1912, the first guard was assigned to the beach at 94th Street. The first beach patrol headquarters and emergency hospital was built at 96th Street. It still enjoys that same location, but with more modern facilities, and has the support of our volunteer rescue squad with its advanced training and equipment. How many of these young men can you name? Let's see how close we can come. 
Reading from left to right, let's start with the bottom row. That's John Heidi, Newburn Fowler, and Reds Richardson. The middle row is Jack Dallas, Bill Simon, a gentleman named Thompson, John Phillips, and Jay Parker Bowden. On the top row, we have James Ogle, Buzz Fulcher, Ward Crescent, and Mr. Gavin. Thanks to Eileen Connor, Parker Bowden, and Barney Miller, who offered the identifications to us. But all the attention was not just centered on the beach. Boating, fishing, and swimming was best enjoyed on our rapidly developing bayfront. Man-made basins with timber bulkheads giving stability to the land provided for homes and piers to be built on the relatively calm waters of the bay. The utility craft named the Nellie Bly offered transportation across Hereford Inlet from its dock at 96 Street's Shelter Haven Basin to Anglesey in North Wildwood, as well as sightseeing trips around the island. In 1911, the Yacht Club of Stone Harbor was constructed on the bay at Sunset Drive just off 89th Street. A haven for boaters, it would soon become known as the home of the Comet and carries that distinction today as Comet Fleet No. 1. Water sports and social activities prevailed then as they do today. This year the club will host the international Comet races with boat skippers from all over the world. Predating by one year the incorporation of our borough is the founding of the Stone Harbor Women's Civic Club. Dedicated to community service, the ladies of the club have contributed to the cultural development and physical well-being of our residents since its inception. Working with the Red Cross, its service to the war efforts of both World Wars I and II were evident in the preparation of bandages, first aid packets, and letters and packages to our boys in the service. Fundraisers conducted by the club today provide donations to many worthy causes in our community and county. As our town developed and 96th Street became its hub, commercial establishments were erected on once barren land. The Hotel Duval that housed our first telephone exchange was built on 3rd Avenue between 94th and 95th Streets. Our municipal building was built on 94th Street and eventually would be converted to the Stone Harbor School. The Radu Drugstore was established at 95th Street and 3rd Avenue and Troxel's Ice Cream Parlor tempted us at 96th Street near 2nd Avenue. The American Store opened at 96th Street and 3rd, joining with Leon's Meats and Fred's Tavern. Commercial activity gave rise to the formation of the Stone Harbor Chamber of Commerce. First known as the Board of Trade, the chamber was formed by a handful of men in February of 1940. From its beginning with 14 members, it has grown to over 240 members and has expanded its concern from just the business community to the well-being of our total borough. But let's put our town into motion as friends of Stone Harbor share with us films of the past. Some of the films that we will see are pictures of families and friends. You may want to look beyond the people on the screen to see scenes of the earlier days of Stone Harbor. The first sequence is a vacation in Stone Harbor in 1935, contributed by Jerry Gilbert of Camp Hill, Pennsylvania.
These are films of the Van Thine family, loaned to us by Eileen Van Thine Devery of Ambler, Pennsylvania. Here was our Yacht Club building in 1936. And in 1936, this was St. Paul's Roman Catholic Church and School. Yes, we had a Catholic grade school for several years. And who can forget the great day when the circus came to town? In 1936, the main tent was set up on vacant ground between 85th and 88th Streets. Just like today, we had sailing races back in the 30s, conducted by the Yacht Club. Our waterworks building, still preserved today and now being rehabilitated. Fourth of July in the 30s features swimming races from the old Shelterhaven Hotel dock. There in the background, you can see our former boardwalk. If it was too hot on the beach, you could always find a cool spot underneath it. But then it happened, the destructive hurricane of 1944. damage was quite extensive as high tide joined with high winds to demolish buildings. And that was the end of our boardwalk as it lay strewn about like giant matchsticks.
How many of you remember the annual speedboat races on the bay? Competitors came from great distances to win trophies and prize money. Here's a quick look at our bayfront in 1955. And yes, Witter even came to Stone Harbor in 1958, as we see in these scenes. Many activities make for a memorable summer in Stone Harbor. Robert Lemon of Stone Harbor shares with us pictures of the baby parades of the 50s and 60s. Pretty babies, creative ideas, and marching bands marked what always seemed to be the hottest day of the summer. Councilman Ehrenberg, co-chairman of our committee, has contributed the following film sequence taken in 1946 by his father.
You may be interested in the beautiful flower displays that also intrigued the senior, Mr. Ehrenberg. And here is what Stone Harbor looked like in 1968.
Fewer bayberry bushes provided fewer nests for our red-winged blackbirds, as more and more construction provided homes for our friends and neighbors to enjoy. And that brings us back to Stone Harbor 1989 and our 75th anniversary celebration. Sure, we've changed through the years. Those beautiful bayberry bushes have given way to cleared lots and more construction. Smaller cottages are being dwarfed by expansive two-story homes. Horse-drawn carts have given way to modern automobiles. The train has disappeared, replaced by superhighways, and more and more people share this peaceful island. But through all the changes, we remain essentially the same. We are still a residential community with families enjoying the beauty and recreation of our seashore and bays. People sharing the comradeship of good neighbors and friends. A community reveling in its past and vitally concerned with its future. As we celebrate the 75th year of our incorporation as a borough of the state of New Jersey, let us rededicate ourselves to maintaining the quality of our community, the concern of our people for its future, and the pride in our past and all that it has meant to each of us. Let's keep forever Stone Harbor, the seashore at its best.